I care about getting this C63 sideways in a cloud of smoke with a V8 rumble echoing off the walls. Are you alright mate? Are you familiar with the W204 Mercedes C63? I've got one over there. What do you think man? It's mad isn't it? That car has 450 horsepower. So that's 450 of you under the bonnet of that little sports saloon. What do you think? Would you have one over an M3? Take, take that as a no. What about your friend? What about you, mate? You E92 fan? Yeah, no, you're getting a biscuit. All right, mate. I'll see you later. I'm going to find out. Bye, right, bye. Okay, and here we are. We're in the C63 on some incredibly greasy December roads. And okay, I'll be honest, I didn't really understand the AMG thing. I didn't get the hype. Of course, I knew they were tire slaying legends and they had big V8s making incredible noise. But from the outside, at least, I always thought they were one dimensional machines. They're just capable of thrilling you when you first get in it. You hear the noise, you slide it around a bit and that's it. But yeah, so I'm driving the C63 to see if I'm correct, to see if there's any more depth to this car than I first realized. So let's find out, shall we? The W204 C63 is the first AMG to properly hunt down the M3, the title of best sports saloon. A comprehensive re-engineering of the standard car includes wider tracks front and rear, new kinematics and bespoke spring and damper rates, as well as beefed up anti-roll bars, all in the name of sharper handling. Styling is still very much standard C-Class though, until you notice those pumped up front arches, the angrier front bumper and those four fat oval pipes. Is it as special as something bespoke like a Porsche Cayman? Well, no it's not, but you see, the C63 has an appeal all of its own. This is a four-door muscle car. Fitting four or five people in a Cayman would involve some serious bodily harm. It's the same story inside. The dash, switch gear and trim are all from the cooking spec car, which is a bit of a shame. However, the important bits, the low-mounted, heavily bolstered seat, the nicely sculpted wheel and the aluminium pedals, all feel pretty much bang on and in the right place. And all these things, they hint at what's underneath. And that is a 6.2 liter M156 V8. And just sitting in this car, it puts you in the mood to really grab it by the scruff. It makes its intent known, which I really like. It's a thug, it's a muscle car. And you make no mistake about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a soundtrack! And we're in a little sports saloon! 450 horsepower, the same amount of torque as a Ferrari 599 with its 6 litre V12. I mean, what on earth is going on? And we've got four doors, it's a little German muscle car! <laughs> oh man, it really, really makes you smile. And from that motor, it's very easy to forget about the rest of the car. You're just consumed by this soundtrack and the torque and the response. It is utterly addictive, this car. <laughs> the response is great, naturally aspirated, big capacity. That's the way you make power. And it's a defining feature of this car. It is the defining feature. That's why you buy a C63, is this motor. If you're enjoying watching me squeal like a girl in a small German saloon, please hit the like button and subscribe for more sports car drives, classic car reviews and track tests. Once you get past that, what else have we got? Well, at the first turn of the wheel, you realise that this has a super fast steering rack for a Mercedes. This is meant to be a relaxed cruiser and yet it just darts into corners. It's not all that precise off centre, there's a bit of woolliness there. And at low speeds, yeah, there's not much weight and not much feedback to work against. But it's a good steering system. But what you do find is, because the car weighs 1,700 kilograms, the fast steering rack can sort of excite it too much at speed, especially when you're making corrections, which you will be doing a lot in this, by the way, if you've got the systems off in the wet. 
you feel the weight sloshing side to side and you feel the car get too excited by the speed of the rack. And yeah, compounding that is the fact that to have any body control at all, the car's been set up really, really stiff. And over bumpy British B-Rows like this, yeah, it's, it's a bit crashy, it's a bit coarse. There's not so much finesse to the ride quality. And for me, this is a little bit confusing because to me anyway, a Mercedes, a performance Mercedes as well, should be a car that's somewhat relaxing and normal to use in day-to-day -day use, which this really is. But the stiff ride quality just seems unnecessary because it'd make more sense to have this big bombastic engine but with a cassetting ride to really differentiate this from the M3. Because that, let's be honest, is the sharp driving tool. It's the car that you take on track and really rag around and that's better than this at the very limit. But again, I come back to that motor. <laughs> Do I look like I care about the ride quality? Because I don't. <laughs> I care about getting this C63 sideways in a cloud of smoke with a V8 rumble echoing off the walls. And if you haven't guessed it already, on the limit, this car is all about oversteer. And we like that, we really do. <laughs> because of all that talk, you're a millimeter of throttle away from a slide at any given point. So yeah, this car is all about exciting the rear and getting some big smoky slides going. But this particular model does not have the performance pack. And that's significant because this car does not have a limited slip differential. That to me seems just ludicrous. 440 pounds foot of torque without a limited slip differential. Yes, okay, it probably breaks the inside wheel to stop excessive spin up, but still, when you're coming out of tight corners, it's never really totally predictable like it would be if it had an LSD because you've got that inside rear snatching and spinning up and doing all sorts and yeah in a car as powerful as this you want an LSD in it and all that power and torque is sent through a seven speed automatic gearbox it's not a torque converter in this car this is the facelift and the torque converter has been replaced with a set of clutch packs and yeah, so when you're just cruising along, not looking to push the car, I think this gearbox really suits the character of the C63 because it slurs changes, it's very smooth, it's very easy to use. You don't even notice the changes most of the time. But then yeah, when you're in manual mode and you're pushing hard, on part throttle at least, there's a bit of a delay in the, in the upshifts. It's not deal breaking, but it is there. It's not a DCT. It's not got that snappy up down the box feel, but. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is that if you want that final nth degree of dynamics and polish from your sports saloon, this probably isn't it. You'll be better off in an E92 M3. And again, if you want to take your car on a circuit or drive it properly hard on the limit, 10 tenths all the time, this probably isn't the car either, because it definitely feels like a road car. It's too heavy to be anything else. And it starts to wallow at the very edges of, uh, of grip. And it doesn't like coping with rough roads when you're really, really on it. But if you keep it below that threshold, as a road car, I think this makes such good sense because it is just a laugh. And that's what we want from a sports saloon, isn't it? At the end of the day, we drive cars to make us smile. And, well, when you've got a 6.2 litre V8 with 450 horsepower to the rear wheels alone, well, it does this to your face. <laughs> Jesus, it doesn't get old. It really, really doesn't. That would excite you every single day of the week. And you could use this car every day of the week. God, I love the C63. It has wowed me more than I thought it would. So if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe as well for future drives. And I will see you in the next one. You can have a bit of V8 noise before you go. <laughs> Ciao!